at 8 to 3 p.m. As always, I'm Ryan Miller here joined again by Scott Elchison and this week's uh, very, very special partner, Chris Stefanik from WAPAD. Welcome, guys. Hey, man. I think, I think the, the proper way to introduce him is Floor Nine's number one unofficial and official fan. fan. <laughs> I'm, I'm a big, big, I'm a big fan. fan. No, a former, a former Floor Nine alumnus, I would say. So I'm excited to chat with you guys again. Yeah, you were our first alumnus. Yeah, the yeah. Floor Nine. The yeah. Floor Nine. Yeah. You were, you were our first guest, um, so I always appreciate you joining us on these adventures that we go down. Um, but it was really kind of impressive that, so I, the podcast went live last night at midnight, and I got a text at 8 o'clock in the morning from Chris saying, great episode yesterday. And I was like, well, yesterday, it's today. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure how you were able to listen to it in that time frame already, but that was, um, that was impressive. But we're glad to have you here. This, yeah, this I'm week, 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 Mm-hmm. All right, right, Chaz, Chaz pulled, pulled up, up over here. here. Chris, Chris, have you ever been live before? before? I don't, I don't think, think I have. have. The thing with like, like today, today. I mean, like, 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 like which day you? Super exciting, right? right? I've like, wow. heard that you've been there. Yeah, yeah that's, that's pretty exciting. exciting. Well, I, I will I have to say, say on, on the production, production elements, um, Ryan has figured out a way. He he really pulled out his developer tool skill set and is now piping our Skype stream directly. He's piping the Skype video and audio directly into Twitch. So that, so that way, way I'm, I'm seeing, seeing now it's like, like we're not delayed, delayed our audio and video quality, quality is much higher. higher. Mm-hmm. Um, so so the, 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 the production is great. great. Well, well we're, we're, we're getting, getting we're making, we're making sure, sure that, that everything sounds, sounds good. Scott, Scott sounds, sounds like I'm in the future. future. Uh-huh. I mean, that's, that's kind of fun. fun. Uh, well, well, we're just going to kind of keep, I guess, has has this audio. So much echo. Should I mute myself? Would that help the audio? here? I can, I can hear you now. Yeah, 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 we can hear you now. Chat. Am I still at it? Am I echoing chat? chat? No, that's all right. Well, chat, chat can, can you now it's still, still echoing? echoing. And, uh... Well, well, so, so this, this is really the sauce to get eight Um About yourself and Wattpad, and uh, we'll mute ourselves on our end, so hopefully that'll take away the echo. Um, but, you know, Chris, who are you? Um, you know, what is Wattpad? Um, and just give us give us a lowdown. Give us the one-on-one. Yeah, for Thank sure. Happy here. happy to do so and uh, yeah, excited to be here. So, uh, Chris Stefanik, head of brand partnerships here um, mm-hmm. at Wattpad. I've actually been at Wattpad for close to seven years, which is a long time and obviously uh, scale up tech land. And so, yeah, Wattpad is a social network for readers and writers. So essentially, um, almost think like social storytelling meets UGC. So our platform, you know, what Instagram does for images or YouTube for video or SoundCloud for sound, like we're doing that for stories and storytelling. Um, so if you think about it, I mean, urge everyone to, to kind of download the app, but you, know, you, you enter in um, very much like a lean in social experience, uh, experience where, you know, you're reading and writing with other people. So whether or not you're like a science fiction um you know, enthusiast or someone that loves romance stories or nonfiction or whatever it may be, you'll likely find a story on Wattpad that appeals to you. Um, and so, you know, you'll, you'll go in, you'll, you'll, you'll 
you know, you'll, you'll click a bunch of story covers that might appeal to you. You enter into a story. There'll be speech bubbles on the right. So people are actually, like, interacting at the paragraph level, DMing their favorite writer, telling them what they like, or, or what might can be approved upon the story. Um, so very much this kind of social, mobile um, reading and writing experience. And so we're over 80 million monthly users now globally. Um, in fact, that number is quite a bit higher given the current environment. Um, largely kind of Gen Z females. So about 80% female and, and you know over about 84% um, you know 13 to 24 in, in, in the U.S. Um, mm -hmm. And these are folks that just, yeah are just obsessed with stories and storytelling. And I mean I guess the last number I would throw around there is like over 665 million uploads of every genre you can imagine. And, and Scott and Ryan, as you both know, we have like a, a part of our business that's focused on adapting those stories um, into Netflix originals, Hulu originals, mm -hmm. feature films, etc. And then of course I'm running, you know, the brand partnership side, which is our brand and um, advertising business. Yeah, absolutely. And so you, you talk about genres, like what, like what are some genres on there that people tend to like really gravitate towards? Um, are, are, are there any of those that really are popping like huge right now in, I guess, during these, these past few weeks? Yeah. So it's, it's interesting to see. I mean, we have obviously a ton of content across, you know, most Strong as you would imagine, right? We're really big in like YA, teen fiction. We're big in romance, uh, substantial fantasy, and science fiction categories. But when you do the double click during these last you know six weeks, we've kind of seen an interesting kind of uh, almost like a paradox, I would say. So we've seen a ton of people coming to our platform, our platform, almost looking for like positive stories and just joyful mm -hmm. stories, right? In a new cycle that is continuously kind of probably keeping a lot of us down. People, uh, I, I strongly believe, need an outlet for, for positive stories and positive storytelling. And so we've seen quite a bit of that happen. Um, close to like 3 billion minutes read stories around the themes of positivity and joy in like the last 45 days, uh, wow. which is pretty amazing. Um, but then, <laughs> then, interestingly enough, on the other side, we've seen an amazing uptick in stories around like tags like dystopia and frankly like zombie apocalypse stories are on the rise. And so there's these two very different two, yeah, yeah, both, both ends of the spectrum there. <laughs> are, there are there any good yeah, yeah. learnings you can share from these zombie apocalypse stories that we should be taking heed of given the current quarantine? <laughs> yeah, yeah, honestly, right? I mean, you know, no, no, nothing different than you could watch you get from watching all seven whatever series uh, or uh, seasons of, of Walking Dead. So, you know, just, just be prepared, right? Um, be, but yeah, yeah, so it's pretty. It's a, <laughs> be prepared. That's a good one. All right, <laughs> I go build myself a bunker. <laughs> yeah, honestly, right? Like all the bill. You hear about the Silicon Valley billionaires that are like left to go to New Zealand because they have bunkers created out there. Listen, right? if there was a place to build a bunker, that is where I would absolutely do it. And I mean, just to uh, keep it like topical, I mean, last night was that NFL draft, and Jerry Jones, the owner of the Cowboys, was drafting from his two hundred fifty million dollars super yacht. So there are some options out there if you can afford it. There yeah. you go. In time, I guess, right? Maybe next time, but next week we'll be at uh, somebody's yacht or something like that. That'd yeah. be fun. Um, <laughs> so I don't know if you guys just, noticed what our background is on stream today. I don't know if you have it pulled up on side, but I figured we couldn't have a conversation about reading and writing if we weren't in a cafe, because if you're not out there putting yourself out for the entire world to see, are you really a real writer? <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Yeah, so we are in the Wattpad Cafe. We're calling it on stream. So, Chris, I think you'll uh, enjoy it if you've uh, pu pulled it up on the side. Yeah, I, so, did, I just literally pulled it up on my phone since we're on. Oh, oh perfect. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Well, th but th so, now, so now you're a pro streamer, right? So you have to, like, engage with the camera and, and the audience. They have to stream on the side. you got to read that and bring them into the conversation. It's a, you know, it's a... It's a piece of art we're going on over here. I got like three screens, two phones, and an iPad. It's it's crazy. Um, but so Wattpad, and when you're working with brands, like like what are what are some of those? I guess like really turnkey ways to to start like that conversation with brands. Like what what are some easy ways that you know brands have come to you uh, with a problem and they're like this is how Wattpad can solve that problem. Yeah, for sure. And so just to, to rehash before just. You know, for everyone that's listening or on the stream, I mean, the the, the quick synopsis again of Wattpad, social storytelling platform, um, largely Gen Z female audience. And what I didn't mention before is it's highly, highly engaged audience. So average user spends 37 minutes per day on the platform. And that is, of course, up, up as well, right? So just if, 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 if everyone takes anything away from the, the Wattpad 101, that's the, uh, the, the quick bullets. 
And so with that, there's a number of ways in which like brands, um, of course, their, their agency partners can work with us. And it really falls into to two camps. Um, there's the content camp and then there's the good old fashioned, you know, ad camp. Uh, I'll, I'll start on the content side. So we've been iterating on this for a number of years and we've done a number of projects with, with across the, the IPG family. And really where we've landed on is, um, you know, a, a product that we just call a branded writing contest. Hmm. And we're able to um, bring brands onto the platform where they push out essentially a prompt to our audience to enable them to create written content around a theme or topic area that's important to the brand. So it may be creating stories around the environment or anti-single-use plastic for National Geographic. It may be about creating you know, stories about being your true, authentic self and who's allowed you to be that person um, for Clean and Clear. So shout out to the J3 team because uh, that was a, a project that we worked with you guys on. Um, and so on and so forth, right? Anything you can really imagine uh, as long as it's kind of framed up in a way that really makes sense and gets of this younger generation excited to create content. And where we've taken that model is we're able to create, you know, hundreds, if not, you know, a thousand plus stories for brands. Um, we can look at all the data and then determine which of those stories we want to turn into something else, i.e. Short, short, short film, animations, ebooks, all of those are things we've done. So it's a pretty right. data-centric uh, approach to, to storytelling and even, like, visual storytelling uh, or whatever it may be, right? So even with... Um, your team out in LA, we did a big program for Sony and the Grudge, mm -hmm. where we had people create stories in the Grudge universe, and the top the top one was created by a top end animator, uh, Drew Christie, uh, which was then thrown through like broader social. So right. that's kind of the content piece. I'll, I'll, that, that makes sense, I assume. Well, yeah. Well, yeah, and we'll and we'll pause there for questions and chat. Let's take a look. Uh, it says, does two hundred and fifty one million dollars actually get you a mega yacht? Um, I don't know. <laughs> uh, maybe. Um, so, but in terms of, you know, building that custom branded content and then moving it to a different iteration and new medium, whether that be movies or TVs or graphic novels or however it might be, what do you think is the most successful transition that you've seen from content from the Wattpad platform into these other mediums or media, I should say? Yeah. And, and so there's two there's two ways to answer that question. I mean, there's the studio's view, which like they are working with Hollywood to create like longer form entertainment, mm -hmm. and then there's you know the brand world where we're large, large, largely doing you know shorter form types of executions. Um, and so I mean, I guess to answer the the, the latter first, um, you know, I think one of the better examples, and it really depends on the medium, but the work we did with National Geographic is is, is pretty cool because it was all around a cause-based initiative, um, i.e. anti-single-use plastic. And so this became like a much more like broader program on Wattpad, like substantial paid media campaigns, contest execution. We had 20 of our biggest writers get involved, which was more of an influencer play, and then all of our social. So all of that kind of coming together results in like a pretty powerful program. It ended up generating over 6,000 stories uh, for uh, National Geographic around anti-single-use plastic. And, and then they actually chose their, six, their nine favorites and turned it into a beautifully published full ebook that they distributed through nationalgeographic.com, right? And then on top of all of that, we were driving tons of traffic to their microsite where they um, were asking people to take a pledge to reduce the plastic in their lives. So that just the, for the audience gives like an example of how all of this can kind of come together to play a much larger kind of role. Um, on the other side of the equation, I mean, um, a, a lot of folks, I think, uh, I have heard this story before, but we have a like a, a movie that was based off a rock head story called After, which came out in the theaters last summer, um, which uh, was essentially based on a One Direction fan fiction, uh, was read 1.6 billion times on rock head, um, and then last year did over 70 million in the box office globally. So like probably our largest success story to date from an entertainment standpoint. You get a production credit at the end there? If you watched it, you'll see Wattpad Studios in the front yeah. credits. All right. <laughs> there you go. That's fantastic. And so then, like, like speaking of us, like, like identifying those insights, like, so then are you guys, like, is a team in the platform looking to understand, like, what are those maybe topics or artists or artists, like, writers that are really, like, exploding on the platform, like, to help them grow or to, like, get them to, you know, I don't know, just kind of be, like, those, like, Wattpad stars, and then, like, that way you can kind of position them as, like, these are, like, our top-tier writers for brands to kind of activate with? Yeah, you, you know, right? We, we, we have a talent management group in-house, 
that essentially is nurturing our top talent while also finding like the next star, right? So we're looking at all the data to determine who has content that's like obviously being engaged at a very high level or is you know, having a very high completion rate or whatever the metric may be, um, and then getting in touch with those writers to determine how we can do more about their content. So that team is actively managing like hundreds of stars on the platform. Or hundreds, of, hundreds of writers, for lack of a better word. Right. Writers can be stars too. It's all good. <laughs> we, 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 we call them stars and just, you know, to, to, to others, maybe not so. Yeah. yeah. Influencers. And, and so we, uh, a question from Jamal's in the chat here is what is the primary platform people are accessing from Wattpad? So I know you mentioned before that like, it, like, there's a mobile app for it, but is, it, is the majority of it on app? Is it on desktop, uh, mobile web? Where are you seeing that traffic come in? Yeah, so 90% of usage is, is mobile, and that's oh, wow. app plus, plus mobile web. So okay. uh, heavy, 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 heavy mobile audience. Um, this world, this word is so outdated now, but like the term mobile first, we really were. So like, the, the, the company has been around for over 13 years. The first version was actually created for like Nokia brick phone. Like literally when people <laughs> no were playing, when people <laughs> were playing hey. Yeah, 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 exactly. So Alan, our CEO, and Ivan, the other co-founder, wanted to create, they wanted to be able to read Moby Dick on their like Nokia brick phone. So needless to say, the vision predated technology. They actually started another company, came back to it a couple years later, right around iPhone 1, and then that's when we really hit Hockey Stick Growth. Wow. Yeah, I'd imagine typing out a novel with one 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 two 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 three three six six would be uh, yeah, yeah. quite an aggressive. It didn't, have task. Writing, it didn't have writing functionality then. Then it was just a reader. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, but Not just even, to yeah. kind of keep it in the, the metrics conversation, uh, obviously we talked about mobile being the primary access platform. But what are you seeing in terms of user behavior? Are there more creators on the platform? More people just kind of sitting around reading? People contributing from a comments perspective? What's kind of the breakdown of the usership across your guys' platform? Yeah, so so in, in these kind of last six or seven weeks since uh, obviously we've all gone to work from home and, and being in self-isolation, we've seen uh, a number of things. So we've seen about 50% increase in signups. So that's, you know, taking us from 100 to 110 to, you know, 150 to 170 now, frankly, 150 to 170,000. Those are all, all, all thousand numbers, right? So uh, that was probably one of the more surprising things to see. Um, and then, as you can imagine, we've seen more like readers turn into writers. So, new stories written on the platform are up 150 um, percent. New writers are up 125 percent, and overall reading time wow. on the platform is up about 30 percent. So, um, you know, everything is, has obviously been increasing as everyone's leisure time has been increasing, which is an interesting um, kind of phenomenon to see. And then we're also seeing with the social aspects on the platform increase as well, where um, the the amount of kind of comments and just engagement, right? That like that that would be the primary engagement number is is up close to fifty percent as well. So um, and then uh, just across the board. So, so it seems like in the time of quarantine, people are very interested in in fan fiction as maybe like an angle of that or writing or creating, um, you know, kind of during during these times, uh, which is fascinating. And like I so I just like love that this. Like this platform exists, right? It's one mm -hmm. of those areas of consumer behavior that I think a lot of you know people and teams don't necessarily think about when it comes to like where where is my audience going to be, you know, on on these platforms. I think there's um, just so much just like potential, uh, knowing that there's just this platform out there that is really focused on this idea of like content and storytelling uh, and covers all the genres that uh, I think our brands are interested in. Um, but it's kind of under the radar still, I think. It, like like you guys have been around for, for years. Um, and so like, I guess what, like, how are you seeing this like Wattpad grow in general? Like, are you guys doing bigger pushes? Obviously like you're getting more into Hollywood and the studio side of things, but, um, it's like, how are you kind of just growing like, like that company? Um, cause I, I think this is like, it's, it's just like a untapped, you know, pool of attention for a lot of brands and consumers that, uh, it, it, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. And I think the, the, so we're very fortunate where a lot of that, almost all of our user growth has happened fairly organically. So our road to you know 80 plus million has been mostly organic. Um, right now, from an awareness standpoint, I mean we're, we're leaning heavily into the studios model, right? So we've had, oh, surprisingly enough, like not all through our own projects, but over time, over a thousand Wattpad stories have been adapted either into a physical book, a TV show, a movie, or a digital series. Um, us ourselves right now, we have got 
over 50 um, different stories and different kind of stages of production and development. So mm -hmm. we're heavily investing into the studios model, um, uh, which will obviously get our brand out there because as mentioned, right, even the first film last year, well, that studio was, was front and center when you started um, watching the movie and, you know, you can still see it um, um, out there through various kind of OTC players. Um, and uh, so that will certainly kind of help the growth there. And, and for me, and as, you know, probably particularly for this audience, is I'm, I'm actually very excited to apply the studios model to brands. Mm -hmm. And I think, it's certainly something that we've chatted about with the, the UN Studios team a, a bunch over the last couple of years, mm -hmm. and and excited to find the right time where we can either I like you know source a new story that can get adapted into like a longer form production for a brand either financed by them or mm -hmm. um, otherwise or through a combination of players because we essentially have like an infinite amount of IP. It's just about finding the right the right IP that makes sense for a brand, or we can just go out there and probably have it created at a written level. So. Um, that wasn't the exact answer to your question, but that's how we're building the brand, and then that's no, how I think yeah. it goes the brand. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And so, so that's that's been a lot of conversation around like like the content, mm -hmm. but then like like let's think about like the like those ad opportunities. So like we talked about branded stories. Um, so you know, outside of branded stories, like what other ways are you seeing brands really really activate on the platform that have been interesting? Like I know like you guys have experimented with um, in in the past voice and with like the tap product. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm just curious, you know, because like, what are those other, uh, brand opportunities that, um, are, are available? Yeah. We, sometimes we, we, we probably don't do a, a good enough job, like just talking about the, the pure ad product. So I'll, I'll break it down pretty quickly, but, um, so as you can That's imagine, what we're here for, you know, we want the nitty gritty ad products. <laughs> there was there, there we go. I want to Anderson see boxes all day, baby. Like, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. There's a rich right. media we'll unit, around. you know? Do, can I put vast tags on this? Like, like, let's get down to brass tags here. <laughs> Let, let's do it. Let's do it. So, so the, the, the predominant pool of our inventory sits in between chapters in app, right? Mm -hmm. If you imagine you're reading a story, whether or not it's on any device, that's an, there's a natural break in the reading experience. So that's where we hit you with an interstitial ad, right? Within that unit, we've created a very flexible experience in which it could be um, a variety of different video products. So our, our most popular video products are for 15 seconds. Um, or for a six second bumper, but we you know we offer all the way up to a 30 second spot that's, that's skippable, right? So that's largely our most popular unit, it performs very well, except Vast Tag, where we can um, I digest your own kind of video asset. So I've uh, done a lot of work there, but also in that in that space, we can deliver a 300 by 250 if that's you know what mm -hmm. the advertiser agency has. So that's the primary um, area for advertising. On top of that, on the web product, we have an outstream video product, which I know some people have, have varying degrees of opinions on, but I would say we've, uh, you know, selfishly or, or biasedly, I'd say that we've, we've created it in a way where, again, it's naturally at the bottom of the reader, depending on the, the, the length of the story, um, which, which makes sense from a user experience. So we're seeing pretty strong performance there, too. In fact, uh, probably one of our highest performing units from a click-through perspective. Then, of course, we've got leaderboards and, and, and MREX, um, throughout the, the, the web and, and, and mobile web experience as well. Um, and then lastly, there's a variety of really kind of ad opportunities on the home screen in app, which is okay. largely like a native unit, um, which can also kind of support video there as well. Um, so yeah, and then there's a few other smaller mobile leaderboard mm -hmm. kind of places right. as well. But usually I, I push people in between chapters, video, that's where you should start with us, that's the best, and kind of run from there. So yeah, I mean, that's really helpful and super comprehensive in terms of the products that you guys have. But obviously right now, agility and speed to market is something that all of the brands are thinking about. So in terms of those entry level campaigns, all the way laddering up to those more scaled, you know, custom executions with Wattpad Studios, what are we looking at for a timeline in terms of deployment for working with you guys? Yeah, so I mean, on, on the media side, I mean, uh, we'll, 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 we'll get live in a week. I mean, previously our SLAs were two weeks, but we understand the the current climate, so we're being super flexible. Um, similarly, on, on the content side, I mean, ideally, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a work back of four weeks. You know, the team would be, you know, they probably are listening, but we've, we've, we've pulled off some crazy magic during these last couple weeks. <laughs> like, in the past of lower than that, so let's just say we're extremely flexible, we act like right. a startup. Nothing is impossible for us. 
not trying um, to re- but, not, not trying to redefine creative timelines for your entire team. <laughs> I, 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 feel, I feel like my head of ops is like on uh, listening in and probably like being on Slack right now. Like, Shut up. <laughs> it's okay. This is just a big pass piece of fan fiction that we're doing here. So anything is in a safe space. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah, so just to kind of piggyback off that thought, um, in terms of entry level budgets, company wants to come in, test with you guys. What would you recommend as you know a first segue into the Wattpad ecosystem? Yeah, so I mean, there's, there's two camps again: content camp, ad camp. Uh, on the content side, you know, pre kind of uh, COVID and everything we're in here, with the the minimums were for 50k. We've, we've, we've dropped that during everything that's going on to 25, right? Just to make sure we're still onboarding new partners. And of course, we're open to interesting conversations based on the messaging you might be putting out in market. If it is obviously a little bit more COVID related, you know, uh, we want that stuff on the platform. So we're, we're open to all conversations there. And then uh, on, the, on the content side, i.e. like large scale writing contests with large media budgets and influencers involved in social engagement, that will start at 150. Nice. So solid, solid ranges. The so we haven't talked. Well, I guess we talked a little bit about like metrics and engagement. You know, we we we're, we're, were going down the nitty gritty um, ad side of things. So like when I, I guess, so I'll start with this targeting. How are you targeting on on the platform? You know, is it standard just demographic targeting? Can we ingest HVAs into the app? You know, in, into the audience? Is it more just like context based? Uh, kind of trying to find words within stories that align with the ad product or brand messaging that we're trying to do. Uh, so, how does like that targeting conversation work on the Wattpad platform? Yeah. So, uh, the, the 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 age demo, all the all the regular table stakes stuff there, we do. Mm-hmm. Um, what's interesting from a Wattpad perspective is is, is more of like the, the the contextual content based kind of um, advertising. So, everything on Wattpad is tagged out. Right, mm-hmm. and 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 some of it is, is generated by us. Some of it is generated by by the user. Um, so, for example, if if you know if Spotify was, was coming on the platform and uh, promoting a, a new, say, uh, you know, uh, a new narrative podcast that might be affiliated with the LGBT plus community, right? We would we, we could absolutely take over like all stories uh, tagged LGBT, LGBTQ, or whatever mm-hmm. it may be, right? Mm-hmm. So that's where things get pretty pretty interesting. And, Obviously, the, the primary use cases there that make a lot more sense are are, are in, in the entertainment space for sure, right? Like yep. when you could think about Sony coming on board for a a horror movie, right? We'll take over the horror category, or you know, um, take over whatever it might be paranormal, etc. But this still makes sense for a lot of like very specific campaigns. We've done a lot of work around LGBT plus and pride in the past, right? We have a really really large LGBT plus community on the platform. Um, so of course you can see the, the, the examples there. Similarly, tons of like anti book bullying and kind of teen mental health campaigns where there's a lot mm-hmm. of like, contextual stories written in those themes. Um, what I didn't mention earlier is that like what the, the, the special sauce of that Wattpad is that it's a place where anyone, anywhere, regardless of your background or who you are, where you're from, can feel comfortable and safe to build your story and write a story the way you want it to be written and get positive feedback and build a positive audience and for the most it's the thing that we're most proud of and really what gets all of it out of, out of bed in the morning is that we've been able to build such a safe space. So I've di- di- diverged there, but I realized I kind of would be a no, well, I didn't mention well, that, earlier. So that, that leads us into a great conversation about brand safety. Um, so like, what are you, I mean, I, I assume, because again, it, there is a community aspect to it. Um, so what, in what ways are you, you know, like thinking about brand safety uh, and when brands do come on the platform uh, and just to kind of make sure that, uh, that is a, a a standard that you guys or practice that you guys have on the platform. Yeah, so for sure it's a combination of humans and, and technology as for most mm-hmm. kind of players. Um, like all content is appropriately like uh, categorized when it comes on the platform, and for sure there's some content that like we wouldn't want to run ads on. And so if it's unbrand safe, like uh, we'll never run an ad on, on on that story, right? If it's considered you know mature on, on the platform, um, and then what we have is essentially 600 Wattpad ambassadors around the world, which are basically like unpaid, you know, volunteers that are just really love Wattpad so much. They, they a group of them are constantly like recategorizing content, ensuring that, that it's appropriately kind of ranked and, 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 and uh, tagged out. 
And then, of course, we've got like our in-house trust and safety team that is monitoring mm-hmm. content well, right? And so, um, and then you know, beyond that, there's a variety of tools that that are that are that are um, ranking things once you know content or images are are, are uploaded to the platform as well. Yeah. And did, you, did, you, did you guys hire anybody from the the Facebook trust and safety team? I hear that's like the that is like the school <laughs> that is like the school where if you want to be like you know trust and safety, you know, you go work at Facebook. Um, and that's kind of like where you get like your training from to kind of go out in the world. We haven't, but I mean, we're, we're Toronto, Toronto, you know, a based company. Um, we've obviously got offices in LA and New York, but all the trusted safety folks are up here. So I don't, I don't think Facebook has a trusted safety uh, group out here yet. So we've kept everything kind of in house here, but of course, right. you know, we're looking to potentially change that moving forward. But for sure, I think uh, that presents an opportunity as we, we look ahead. <laughs> And I think the Facebook school is the Marine Corps school of, you know, brand safety. So anyone who's working there definitely has it cut out for them. But I just want to turn our attention over to chat real quick. Uh, We got a couple of really interesting questions coming in. Um, Jamal's again wants to know if writers ever collabed and created a piece live on the platform. That's a really, really great uh, and interesting question. Uh, We experimented with co-writing years ago. Uh, it never made its way into the product, but it's something I'm like like we are keen to to, to look at again. So that, that that exact functionality can't happen if we're like live on the mm. product. What we have seen is, is it happening outside of the product. So as you can imagine, obviously the Steverse community, there's writers that do live streams, there's there's four writers particularly that, that do like live Twitter chats every Monday called the Love Had Four, um, who Ooh. have collaborated. That yeah, sounds yeah, cool. Right. Yeah, that's I cool. feel like I'm they like have a that. crest or a sigil or something too. Yeah, I know. Right? Yeah. That, that sounds super official. The well, Wattpad Wattpad four. is a fantastic four. Yeah. Um, wow. Okay. So, 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 I mean, they do different types of like uh, content around like you know how you build an amazing like protagonist and, and like with like you know other general writing tips. Um, but I bring that up because uh, we know that there are people collaborating in the background, whether or not it's through you know um, just like closed channels, and so. Um, excited to kind of figure out a way to do that in the future. Interestingly enough, we did do a brand activation around that uh, back in the day um, for an Edgewell brand, where where we had um, kind of two two writers collaborate on a story for a brand and then publish it. So it wasn't done live, but we we have kind of toyed around with that in the past. So Very interesting. An, another question that we kind of come in in chat, just in a similar vein, is: Have you ever seen any examples of automated storytelling on the platform? And this one comes in from Hondita. No, but I'm very, very keen to get to that kind of level. I, mm-hmm. I think there's an amazing opportunity for, so we have a, a fairly large machine learning and data science team, and I've always been very uh, interested to figure out a way in which like, the right partner could digest uh, like a ton of content or data from Wattpad to create their own, whatever you name the genre, fantasy story. Mm-hmm. I know there's been other organizations in the world that have said, Toyed around this. I, I believe there was some company in Japan that created the first like fully ML created like science fiction story. Uh, and I just think like imagine like an IBM Watson like type of scenario like plus Wattpad creates like the first ever fully machine um, learning or or machine written you know romance story whatever it might be. So we, we haven't done anything like that, but uh, we're all years. Sir. <laughs> yeah. The machines telling us about love. <laughs> and exactly. A lot of things are great. Tell us what we don't know. <laughs> There's actually a really good example. I don't know if either of you have seen it, but someone used machine learning capabilities to watch every episode of the new Queer Eye, and they wrote a short script of what a Queer Eye episode would look like. So if you have the opportunity, go check that out. Very on point if you've seen the show. Yeah, That's kind of impressive. Whenever it comes to that type of stuff, I'm, I'm, I'm always watching... Um, the like open AI, like how like, they're like training to play StarCraft. I think that's just fascinating, um, and the mechanics of that mm-hmm. game. So it's like users can like are trained. I, I think it's beaten now. Everybody or like some like like the absolute top players. Um, same thing with, with with like AlphaGo. Yeah, um, that great and, documentary and, on that on Netflix. Yeah, uh, it's really interesting. But again, really really focus on one thing. You know, that, like that like that general awareness isn't isn't here yet. But hey. You know, maybe all all it needs is a little injection from the Wattpad kind of like you know creative community to really you know, <laughs> explore like the human profile, and then from there we can unlock general AI intelligence. Who knows? <laughs> it's probably not as far away as we think it is. 
Uh, I hope it's further away than we think it is. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need Barnes and Nobles to be completely stocked with Wattpad, IBM Watson originals. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. So what really interesting in the lead up to this conversation when we were connecting offline, you told us about a study that Wattpad recently run on the Gen Z audience. Um, I would just love to get a little bit more insight, some of the key findings that you guys saw from that. Uh, just kind of tell us everything and we could kind of dive into some combo around that. Yeah, so one of the first things we kind of did to react to the whole kind of COVID scenario was, was survey our audience. So we have something called Generation Wattpad, which is our our U.S. and Canada, actually, youth panel. So close to 5,000 people across North America that have opted in to be regularly surveyed from us about a variety of different topics. So uh, definitely shout out to our, our marketing team because they, they, they jumped on this super quick to kind of be first to market around you know, how Gen Z is feeling um, and how this is shaping their behaviors and beliefs uh, and, and all of that. And uh, certainly a, a few of the UN team is actually plugged into it. So, so uh, thank you to those. I think they're, they're plugging into the survey number two. And interestingly enough, so the, the top feelings amongst Gen Z was you know, number one, boredom, then quickly followed by like, stressed and anxious. Not the stress and anxious piece, I think, is probably common around like every generation. I don't think that's truly differentiated, but certainly, certainly they're you know more uh, more bored than probably the others as, as they're they're exiting school or, or, or wrapping up their year or whatever it may be, which I thought was an interesting takeaway. And then as we dug a bit further around, you know, what do they expect from brands at this time? The the, the number one thing they were expecting them to do was was of course like donate both supplies and money. Mm -hmm. uh, both of those were, if I remember. Um, like 60 plus percent, I think 66 percent uh, said that they should be donating supplies. 41 percent of the audience said they should be donating money. But what I thought was interesting was a third of the audience still expected brands to be producing content in this time, hmm. right? Or uh, to entertain them through content. Um, one third, one third is not insignificant, and and, and that that mm -hmm. to me was potentially the most interesting insight. There was a bunch of them, but I, I don't want to exhaust it, and yeah, I, I'll, I'll fire it over to you guys. You guys can share around with whoever logs on today but yeah. but that 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 is an interesting like like a jump off point for obviously everyone at the agency and, and the brands we're talking to because we're content deprived right now right like people are like well i've done tiger king i've been done tiger king for weeks <laughs> <I'm gonna> watch, <laughs> right? <laughs> well and so i mean it's interesting too right so because your platform it's all it's all digital right so it's like similar to like you know, game streaming and podcasting, like remote remote production is very possible. Um, yeah. And it's something that can be done and, and you're able to still to produce that content. Um, and so I guess when it comes to like, to like what they were saying, like, like did they lean or give any like skew towards like the type of content that they were interested in? Like, do they want to see humor? Do they want to see strict just like corporate, like, you know, responsibility and how like you're giving back, like where is like that, I guess, like feeling of the, of the type of content that they're looking for? Yeah. So this was done a few, a few weeks ago. This was done, uh, the, the, the server went out, I think at the end of March, beginning of April, if I remember. Um, and the, the view on humor was, was definitely a little bit, uh, I don't think that was the right angle at that point. Mm -hmm. that brands maybe should not be going down the humor angle. Uh, and there was like uh, actual quantitative evidence to that and qualitative evidence to that. They, they, they felt it was more about positive storytelling and, uh, and, and, and also talking about how you are giving back and doing good. And I think now that a couple of weeks have passed, I think we've seen that come to light, right? A, a, a number of kind of activations happening. Obviously, um, you know, McDonald's talking about over the last couple of days around uh, providing, you know, make, like, Happy meals to the front line, and and, and, and a number of other examples. I'm sure there's, there's plenty of them, um, which I think was was the right play. Now, if you fast forward, like now we're in week six or seven uh, of of self isolation, I, I'm really curious to see if the perception has changed. Because, for example, you know, we saw the State Farm um, Last Dance Michael Jordan like fake ad that took place back in the like the 90s which like was definitely comical, right? So they, they went the comic route, and that, that from, from all accounts and, and the trades and everything, that, that, that did very well, and I laughed. So my point being is I think the consumer behavior or perception is changing pretty quickly, but at the point in the survey that said no humor, we should be doing positive-driven mm -hmm. uh, messaging at that point. 
Right. And yeah. I think that the injection of levity is something that brands can really start to think about as we start to emerge into this new next normal, especially as it pertains to those younger generations. I think that that call out specifically from your guys' study highlights kind of the generational divide that we're seeing, you know, in terms of sentiment that people want to see from brands. So super interesting. But sorry, Scott, I cut yeah. you off. No, no, no. I was just, I was just thinking, and, you know, again, here it's, it's like we, we think about and we keep talking about how, you know, COVID-19 is accelerating trends, right? And so just what happens this week compared to last week and the week after, I mean, it changes a lot. Like we're, we're living in a very rapid time frame. Um, and that can just be like, it was hard to like navigate because Chris, your point, like this, this study was done and, you know, published, but it was recorded like two or three weeks ago. And maybe like, like the whole sentiment on humor has completely flipped and people maybe may now be more interested in humor just because maybe like we've actually gotten over like that like apex of the um like buildup of, of everything and, and we're getting more adjusted to uh the way that we're living our, our lives right now um and so i was thinking like that's just something to always kind of keep in mind uh is just to you know understand the environment that you're in and how fast it's going so that way you can make your decisions appropriately you know across the uh ecosystem of whatever you might be doing um so that, that was something that was kind of like, like stirring in my head I guess. Um, yeah, I think like the my, my comment there, I, I totally agree, right? I, I think at, at the end of the day, right, everyone should still be thinking about how can you do good, right? Like how do you leverage whatever organization you're in and the assets you have and the influence you have to still like make a difference, but we're not through this yet. And, uh, you know, not to, not to go down this hole, but like that, that, that would be mindset, my mindset. And it still is, right? In terms of like us doing pro bono campaigns and mm-hmm. supporting local agencies here in Toronto, or whatever it may be, like, you know, whatever you can do is that's still the name of the game. Now, if, if you're good at making humorous content, do that, right? Like, people need right. to be entertained as well, right? Like, if that's your shtick, if you're, you know, whatever, National Lampoon, right? Like, go out there, produce some new content, like, entertain us, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, you know, in, in a time like this, you know, if you have a solid base, like, really, like really lean in on that base. It's like double down on uh, whatever, whatever that like that might be. Because I mean, to your point, like people need both sides of the conversation. You know, we, we need both the the comical and humor relief in it and, and, and entertainment. But we also need like the sincerity and seriousness and you know like respect as well. So it's kind of balancing that and figuring out where you play and um, you know kind of navigating it through through there. Um, so Chris, when you think about Wattpad and the, and the audience and you know, all the different, I guess, like, ways that brands are activating on, on the platform today. Like, are there any, I think, like, I guess, like, new ideas or ad units um, or, I guess, like, product developments that you're thinking about um, that could be really interesting? You know, for, for example, integrating, like, live streaming into the conversation that somehow, like, again, like, I know we talked about, like, there are some people that are, like, getting on board and doing some uh, weekly things, but just, like, in general, have you seen anything that's really happening now that you're like, ooh, this would be good for us to kind of develop towards as we continue along and this like shift in consumer behavior. Yeah, no, it's it's, uh, it's a good question and, and something I, I recently posed to my team. Um, I think there's an interesting way for us to kind of test the waters around some of the more live streaming pieces, mm-hmm. potentially with brand partners, and doesn't have to necessarily exactly be built like on our platform. Like, can we can we activate our platform around you know content creation and then take that content and live read it or do some sort of other streaming event with it? Would, would be um, my quick response to that particular one. Uh, I'd love us to build that right away, but not on the roadmap necessarily. Mm-hmm. Um, what we're what we're investing in right now, of course, is continuously you know, beefing up our data and, and analytics kind of capabilities. Right, like we've had a lot of positive responses to all the surveying we're doing. So that's like you know the more research part of the business. And then um, more of our brand partners are asking us to do uh, like deeper kind of research reports around you know the particular brand and how it's perceived or whatever it may be. So that's kind of happening. And then we actually have a premium product, which is similar to Spotify Premium. And so we have a large group kind of working on the next iteration of that, which mm-hmm. I, I can't really say much, but that's going to be coming Come out. Come on, you don't want to drop some news live on the stream? Yeah. Uh, yeah, right. My PR team would be like, "Yeah, you, no, no, please don't." So, 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 <laughs> Your first so that, and last time on a live stream. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly right. Uh, so that's exciting because right now it's it's mainly like an ad free experience, but we want to add uh, quite a bit to it. So uh, that's ongoing, and then um, we have a paid content model as well, where you use raw coins to, pro- 
to consume some of our like top content and some of our top writers, and and we're we're, we're looking to kind of roll that out in a few other languages. So those are kind of like the, the top line news. And. What I love about Wattpad, you know, in its current state, regardless of other features that you love about, is it kind of plays into the larger theme that we identified in our outlook this year of democratized creativity and giving people all the assets that they need to collaborate in these environments. And as someone who cherishes the, you know, integrity of their book and doesn't even crease the pages to mark where he is in it, I love being able to wow. log on and actually contribute wow. to conversation yeah. to be like, you know, great insight here want to go back and check this out so that's what wapad has really saved me from like no more annotations and ruining books <laughs> there you go <laughs> that's that, that's that, that we can absolutely do digitally and i can't believe you do that in person my books are a complete mess not that i fold them like crazy they're just you know traveling person who they get just completely torched you know i i've tried to make the transition to an e-reader but there's just something nostalgic about holding a book and flipping through the pages and you know that new book <laughs> smell when you pull it off the shelf so that might be a really nerdy aside from me i don't know if anyone else experiences <laughs> this but i mean even for the company i work at i always have a physical book on the go mm -hmm. right I just, you need to put down the screen at the end of the day and at night like i just i just need to jump into a physical book so I'm, I'm with you maybe not as much of uh, affectionate about the new book smell but uh, i appreciate yeah. that <laughs> i'm just I'm waiting for them to release a little trees version of that so i can throw it in my car yeah <laughs> so so what's that point i like so the, what is everybody reading right now what's on what's on the list i mean like digital hard copy um uh, what are the i guess what are you guys reading you know what are the books i can start yeah. here yeah, go for it. Sorry. At Masters of mm. Doom. Uh, this this one goes out to Chad Stoller. He lent this to me, I think, about four months ago now. Um, I'm a, I think about about maybe like almost done, maybe a hundred more pages to go. Really good. It's all about uh, Doom, the game Doom, mm. and how id Software developed uh, that game company back in the early '80s, and really how they really defined what um, the I guess like the gaming ecosystem is. So highly recommend uh, people check That's it. That's amazing. It's really, really. It's it's, 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 a, it's like it was written like a little while ago, right? Like early two thousands or something, maybe even like the nineties. But I, I remember reading it. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. That's, so that's my recommendation. Chris, what about yourself? What are you reading? But right now, I'm reading Kitchen Confidential by uh, the late great, the late great awesome. Anthony Bourdain. Um, so I, I I never got around to it. Again, written it, it was published originally in two thousand. I mean, I'm flying through it, right? Entertainment at its best, right? Like that. What a what a story that guy has. Um, so, kind of interesting to read it, kind of um, you know after he passed. But um, uh, very much in, in enjoying that. And then um, next up, like the business nerdiness of me is the Bob Iger ride of a lifetime. Is like mm -hmm. sitting here, re 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 like waiting to be read next <laughs> to mine. So it's gonna be oh, like nice, entertaining book. A little bit more of a business-sided book, entertaining book. And that's the plan for the rest of the. the yeah. Situation. He might have to update his yeah. or that book to ride a lifetime <laughs> yeah. or two, um, as he thought he was going to retire. But it seems like that's not going to be uh, happening. Yeah, I'm um, sure his the, arm is very chat, tight around the other Bob right now. Yeah, <laughs> uh, in the chat we have uh, Swine is fine calling out Master of Dune was was really was originally published in 2003. Uh -huh. Um, so 17 years ago. You're also getting a shout out for a very hungry caterpillar, the digital version. If you guys ever read that <laughs> book. Um, but I've actually been working on some food research and the last book that I finished is the third plate. Dan Barber would highly recommend it. If you're into food, it talks about what the future of food is ultimately going to entail and what steps we need to take in our agricultural processes to ensure sustainable farming for the future. So if you're into food and, you know, organics and all of that kind of nerdy stuff of fine dining, really, really would highly recommend the book. I, I like it. The, um, that's, yeah, that's really interesting. The, well, we can, I guess we can go just totally pivot, just could do a tangent where it's like, you know, Chris, you know, you, you, you'll pull up the, the keys on Wattpad and we'll start writing our, our own story about food um, on the, uh, the Wattpad site. But the, oh, you should try Beyond Beef. That's all I'm, I'm I'll, I'll plug that real quick. Um, I had the ground beef yesterday for tacos. Unbelievable. It tastes so good. I'm in. I'm, I'm full in on Beyond Meat. Um, so if anybody's in the chat looking for some meat food tonight, all their products, great. The sausage, the patties, the ground beef. Just throw Amazing. a wow insightful there for you too. Oh, thank you. Yeah. 
<laughs> so, uh, I mean, aside from reading, what else have you been doing, Chris, to stay busy? Yeah, so what have I been, what have I been doing? Um, so my local gym it lent me a rower. So they started you, renting it. Let, let's, let's, see, let's see you in. No, 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 no. They, 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 they lent me, like, they let me borrow or, like, rent a full rowing machine. And oh, so, wow. I, yeah, like, I live in, like, a, you know, 800-square-foot apartment in, like, downtown Toronto, so it's not exactly uh, too big. And so that's been interesting to pull in and out, like, the living room when, like, one person's trying to, like, my fiance is trying to either be in her office and, and someone wants to kind of, you know, do a quick do a quick rowing sesh. But, yeah, I've been perfecting my rowing technique. It's probably at the top of the list right now. Right. Uh, yeah, doing what you can, right? So it was a funny story, actually, when they – when I when I got it, like my my gym is walking distance from my place, and so it's like three or four blocks. So it was like me pulling this full rowing machine, like four blocks on a street that is like normally very very busy, but completely desolate. And I was like, right. if someone is in any of these buildings right now taking a picture or video of me, like who's this nut job kind of pulling their rowing machine thing <laughs> well, down the street? Well, hey, at least you I mean, weren't sitting on it and trying to row yourself down the street. Yeah. So <laughs> that's exactly true. So yeah, that's that's the top list, and then, you know we're doing the whole cooking thing, trying to try to perfect the perfect uh, banana bread as per most. Ooh, for banana oh. bread, well, not, so, a oh, not a sourdough house. Not a sourdough house. That's hysterical. Chocolate have, chips in have, your banana bread or no? Pardon me. Por- chocolate chips in banana bread or no? For sure. Well, okay. You go for like the, the 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 like the dark chocolate or like the, the, mm. the like the, the sweet one or the like the milk chocolate. And we've got milk chocolate. We feel good about it. <laughs> All right, solid decision. Now, listen, I'll I'll challenge you to a banana bread bake off. We have an Elcherson family recipe that has been passed down from generation to generation, uh, and <laughs> to, to to this day, uh, I haven't seen anybody make a banana bread that gets as crispy yet as moist um, as we can make it on ours. Wow. So we'll have to start oh, a banana. Come down to New York. I'll have to like bring one in. Listen, later. it's on. You know, we can. We'll go to the uh, Bon Appetit test, test kitchen, and there'll be a whole banana bread bake off. Got, guys, I actually okay. heard of this really great platform where we can get together and we can collaborate on recipes, and we can start a banana bread cookbook. I don't know if you ever heard of it. It starts with a W or something. Uh, <laughs> oh. Oh, just me. oh, yeah, what? Yeah. Right? <laughs> that would be a good one. There we go. That's, that's a follow up from the. From the from the from the Twitch stream. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, and and here's a here's a real good question here. Um, what beard product do you use, Chris, from <laughs> from Jamal's? Another beard um, connoisseur. I I forget I forget the the, the brand name, but it's um it's it's a sh- it's a shampoo and conditioner that is eu- eucalyptus eucalyptus uh, uh, pine like pine oil um, wow. and. I'm mixture apparently so okay. yeah it's, it's, it's been treating me well this thing has been lasting me for forever so it's like I don't even know the brand name anymore but it's great yeah. that's impressive so uh I mean, you used to be a big beer beard uh you know I know uh, Chiando yourself I'm, I'm a mustache guy now yeah dude my beard's yeah. longer than yours right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely um well so I know that we are getting close to the end here, Chris. So I do want to recover some of the key questions that we're always asked uh, when we are interviewing partners. Big so three. as, so what, Ryan? The big three questions. Oh, the big three questions. Yeah, we're trying to find a name for it. So if anybody has any good idea for like the segment for like the big three or whatever it might be, like, you know, like the WAPAD four, um, <laughs> these, are, these are the questions that, that, that we always kind of get asked. So um, just to reiterate, one, what is what is what is a pricing? You know, how can our brands activate with you uh, in the estimated price range? Yeah, so so uh, you know, media right now in this climate could bear twenty five, normally fifty k. Um, open to kind of all conversations there, particularly if it's kind of COVID messaging. And then on the content side, you know, generally those conversations start at one hundred fifty k. What is what is the scale of the platform? Yeah, the scale platform is eighty million plus uh, globally. That's fourteen million in the U.S. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier. Um, demo largely Gen Z females, and then I always mention you know uh, hyper engaged audience thirty seven minutes per day on the platform. Mm-hmm. And then turnaround time. You were getting pretty close to uh, <laughs> redefining some timelines when, 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 when we last asked. So um, yeah. Yeah, so, so, so media, I, I, ideally a, a, a week, um, if not two, but right now it seems to be close to the one-week threshold. And then um, content, 
ideally four weeks, but as mentioned, we're, we're, we're pulling off some, some miracles over here. So, uh, you know, uh, reach out with the craziest timelines and we'll see what we can do because, you know, we probably probably pulled it off. That's what, that's what I get, the, the non-Twitch conversation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that so that sounds great. Um, well, I guess to wrap up here, Chris, I mean, is there anything else that is new in your life in Wapad? Uh, out of the research that um, the team's been working on and looking and kind of like discovering that you think uh, our brands or agencies are our viewers should know about. And also to piggyback on that one thing we should be checking out on Wattpad because we yes. want to send our, the watchers home with a great recommendation. Yeah, for sure. And so, um, you know, o- overall, I think, you know, continue to look out for our research would be like my my, my, my big plug at the end here, right? Uh, certainly, uh, the first report is out. I know it's been circulated quite a bit across the agency. Uh, we're going to have a second report that's going to be out by mid-May where we've gone deeper on like particular vertical areas like skincare and others, which I know, you know, particular kind of over in your universe we're, we're interested in knowing about. So look out for that by, by mid-May. And, uh, we, you know, who knows, we might be... Um, you're doing a bit of like a, a live stream or, or some sort of you know uh, presentation around it, kind of virtually. Um, so that's the big the big pieces there. Um, in terms of what to read on the platform, um, I mean some of these stories are actually in the in the in the in the, in the paid models universe. But there, there's a story called Given featuring like an Afro futurist, which is a pretty cool kind of diverse mm-hmm. bit story um, that is quite popular. So that's probably the first the first one that kind of comes to mind. Um, and yeah, what else is there to, to know? I think um, the last plug, I think, would be around the research side. Again, if people have things they want to know about Gen Z, I mean, we're just really leaning into this. If folks have questions or, or interesting research ideas. I think we're, we're all ears about this stuff right now. Right. I think we um, are, are leading into this a ton, and we have a lot of reasons that's kind of going into this. So um, we've kind of done the full call out for this next survey, but there'll probably be more. And so, um, yeah, definitely reach out, Chris, at wattpad.com if you have thoughts or if any of this piqued your interest, certainly, certainly um, shoot me a line. You know, we've all got a bit of free time these days. <laughs> well, Chris, that was awesome. And again, for our, for our listeners, this is uh, Chris Stefanik from, from Wattpad, head of brand partnerships. Um, if you're interested, let us know. We will make any sort of connections, introductions. Uh, Ryan just dropped his email in the, in the chat for anybody that wants to reach out directly. Um, so Chris, you know, thanks for coming on the stream, uh, talking everything about Wattpad, uh, and what's going on in your life. Um, we have three more minutes and we have some questions that we can answer in the chat. Uh, so if you guys want to do that, yeah, we can do hey, that. go for it. Might as well get them in. Um, one from Jamal's, you put pineapple on your pizza on the topic of food. No, <laughs> but my fiance does. Oof. That's, Ooh, that is a total no go. Um, another one. Um, is it hard to walk around your apartment with it being so blurry? <laughs> is it so blurry back there? <laughs> I mean, not, not particularly, but you know, I've, I've grown to like, just know where everything is. I have another one. While you're, you're using the herb, do you have your wife sit on the end of it and act as your coxswain? No, but that's, a good, your that's a good out. idea. That, that might have to be a, like a <laughs> Christophanic household innovation. Yeah. <laughs> Keep some tempo going. <laughs> Oh, that's too funny. I, I think, I think that is all of them. Yeah, wow. that that awesome. that is about it. Um, oh, wait, one more. Have you ever been? Have you been to every place pictured on your map? <laughs> no. If we were to, if we were to zoom in on that, there is um, a number of places that have scratched out. Mm. Some scratch. So it's oh, one of those cool. nifty, nifty places. So quite a bit to go there. Actually, if you look at it, there's, there's a lot of scratch. So. Hopefully, I can get to that sooner sooner than later. You might have to start a virtual tourism board for the one right next to it, in yeah. places you've been virtually, places yeah, yeah, you've I'll been for some, real. I'll do, some, I'll do some of those virtual tours, to like yeah. like fake scratch things. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, we're coming um, right up on three o'clock. So again, Chris, yeah. thanks for joining us. Everyone who's uh, tuned in today, thanks for hanging out. We love having you here. Uh, please stop by every Friday, two to three p.m. to be a fly on the wall for one of our partnerships meetings and. Uh, yeah, had a great time as always, and thank you guys again for joining in. Thanks, fellas. Take care. Thanks, Chris.